Well, thank you so much, Catherine. We are now going to talk about your financial checklist and getting you prepared for 2017. Joining me is Andrew Raphael. He's the president of Baintree Wealth Advisors. So good morning. Good morning, Danielle. It's always great to be here. Well, thanks for coming down because this is something that, you know, one of those conversations that you don't really want to have, thinking about your finances at the end of the year, but you got to have right. it. And you have some step-by-step -step things that we need to do. And number one, you talk about hitting your limit. This is how we maximize that savings account. So how do we go about yep. that? So end of year, we have with 401k contribution up to $18,000 that we okay. can contribute. So what you want to look at now that we're into November is have you hit that limit? And if not, can you deduct a little bit more by mm. saving more before end of year? Okay. If you're over 50, there's also a, uh, a, a step up. So you can actually save up to $24,000 okay. into the 401k. Now, is this something you can look at with um, your payroll department to say, can you help me out to give me a gauge as to how much I should be deducting now? Correct. So with regards to uh, withholding, if you're withholding, let's say 10% mm -hmm. and you still have a few thousand dollars that you can hit that limit of 18,000, you want to talk to payroll or HR, mm -hmm. and then that way you can maybe withhold 15% in November, December, and that way you can max out before end of year. Okay, because you want to get yourself secure. And speaking of being secure, we want to secure our future, and this is talking about our tax deductions yep. for the end of the year, which is something that, you know, who thinks about this except for when it's time to do tax season in you know, April? So how do we go about getting yep. that in? It is the season of giving. So yeah. when we look at, at deductions and, and contributions to mm -hmm. charities, right off the top, if you do give, whether it be a cash donation, a vehicle, that comes off your taxable income. Okay. Um, Arizona also has some wonderful tax credit. So a tax oh. credit is a dollar for dollar reduction. Or think in terms of you're going to have to pay the tax to the state they allow you to contribute through the working poor as well as the foster care oh, okay. as a single filer you can contribute up to four hundred dollars and then as a joint up to eight hundred dollars so you're not getting away from paying that arizona tax you're just getting to direct it to a qualifying charity now if you had a couple of charities in mind throughout the year that you know you want to donate to is there a certain amount that you should give so you can have a better um response, I would say, at the end of the year when you do do your taxes? Yeah, I think it really is, you know, regards to each of you with income expenses and just, uh, you know, whether it be 10 percent of your overall income that you bring okay. in. Um, but I don't think there's going to be a, a set amount. It's just what feels comfortable and you want to make sure you can still cover all your bills as well. Absolutely. But that's good to know. So um, finalizing your move, this is um, something we need to talk about when it comes to maybe you're retiring. Yep. And things are going to change with your income drastically. So how do you go about um, lining yourself up right. for that? So with end of year, if let's say you've had some gains within some of your non-qualified money, mm -hmm. we can have some of those gains. If we sell those, we're going to have some, some, some capital gains on that. Well, if we have some losses as well, mm -hmm. what we can do is net that out. So you have your capital gains, your capital losses, and you may be able to sell some winners, sell some losers, and then have no capital gains on those particular sales. Um, also, if you are in a lower income, let's say you've, you've been working, you retire, your income drops, and you have IRAs or 401ks, well now what we can do is look at converting some of that, of the pre-tax money, it's called a Roth conversion. Okay. So what happens is we're taking money out of the, what we call the, as we're working, the pre-tax or the tax infested bucket, right? Mm -hmm. We're working, we're getting that tax deduction. When we get into retirement, we're going to have a lot more, you know, taxes owed on that money. So if we can convert some of that at a lower income, it allows us to position money into a Roth IRA account, which down the road is growing tax deferred. Mm -hmm. When we pull it out, it's going to be tax free and there are no required minimum distributions. And that just makes more sense for you and it's less of a headache. So you do have, you know, some money to work with instead of being stressed at correct. having less for all that you've worked all those years. That's correct. Now, what happens if you were married and you get divorced and your assets change that way? Is that the same kind of thing that you need to do is preparing yep. yourself like that? One of the things we look at end of year is looking at beneficiary forms. So whether we have IRAs, 401ks, life insurance, if there's been some changes, whether marriage, okay. divorce, a death, or a birth, we want to make sure that those beneficiary forms are accurate. If we got divorced and you left your, your ex-spouse on there as the primary beneficiary, Ooh, no matter yeah. what happens, if you were to pass away, that trumps everything. That would trump the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the divorce decree, the estate planning. So make sure at this time of year that you look at your beneficiary forms and make sure if you make, if those, changes. make those changes. Correct. Wow, that is good to know because sometimes that slips your mind and you're like, oh my goodness, they're still on there. That's right. And it does change the whole game up. All right, we got about 30 seconds. I want you to yeah. tell everybody where they can go to get the information because your company does a wealth of different things. Correct. So Baintree Wealth Advisors, we're located in Scottsdale. Mm -hmm. And you know our ultimate goal is helping our clients create a financial roadmap 
to help get them from point A to point B Correct. and to make sure that everything in their life is handled from both tax planning, investment planning, uh, you know, state planning, et cetera. And you know, having a CFO that's there to help guide them through, that's really what we do for our clients. They got one source to go to and they know that we're gonna provide them a plan, help them reach their dreams, and inevitably have a safe and secure retirement. So they can retire the way they want it. That's right. That's you know, the, goal. the big dream is to retire comfortably. That's right. Well, Andrew, you're fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you for the information. It's vital that we do these sort of things because the end of the year will be here before you know it. Don't go anywhere when we get back from finances. Now we're going to talk sweet treats. We've got pie coming up very soon.